Go ahead. Brother, a woman has done your work for you. Interesting facts about famous people. Actors who were miscast in westerns. We have all seen a movie and thought at some point, what is that actor doing in this movie? There's just something wrong with the casting, a mismatch. Today, we will take a look at some westerns where this has happened. Sometimes it works, an actor playing against type, by some weird reason, it just all falls into place. Some actors have the ability to act in just about any genre, and some don't. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's get into it. William Shatner in White Comanche. Shatner was in White Comanche after Star Trek, the original series, ended in 1964, where he played not one, but two half-white, half-Comanche twin brothers named Johnny Moon and Nota. Shatner played two disparate characters, particularly in the scenes involving Peyote. Listening to him discuss leading the Comanche to victory over the white population of Rio Hondo doesn't age well. This film is listed among the 100 most enjoyable bad movies ever made. In Golden Raspberry Award founder John Wilson's book, The Official Razzie's Movie Guide. Doris Day in Calamity Jane. It's difficult to imagine the bubbly blonde appearing in Calamity Jane as the Western icon living in the new territory of Deadwood, Dakota. The movie puts the sharpshooter into the plot of My Best Friend's Wedding and makes her only focus on finding love on the frontier, as well as bringing real women to the love-starved townsmen. Not only does the narrative greatly minimise her accomplishments as well as her association with Wild Bill Hickok, but it also makes no attempt to roughen up her glamorous appearance. Day had to lower the sound of her natural voice in order to sound more gruff to play the rough and ready calamity. Doris Day's performance inspired the look and voice of Jessie from the Toy Story franchise. James Cagney in The Oklahoma Kid. Cagney appeared in The Oklahoma Kid in 1939, along with fellow tough guy Humphrey Bogart, playing a version of Cops and Robbers, with Bogart's Whip McCord stealing money owed to the first Americans and Cagney's Oklahoma Kid stealing it back. Cagney playing an altruistic white hat hero just doesn't work and he was much better starring with the same cast later that year in the Roaring Twenties. This was James Cagney's first western. It was not a commercial or critical success. He would appear in only two more westerns, Run for Cover 1955 and Tribute to a Bad Man 1956, both much later in his career. Humphrey Bogart is widely quoted as saying that co-star James Cagney looked like a mushroom in his costume. Drew Barrymore in Bad Girls, a revisionist western from the 90s that righted a few wrongs about women in the Wild West, though it took more creative license than many would have liked. Nevertheless, applying Charlie's Angels to the frontier didn't help Drew Barrymore, who looked out of place holding a rifle. While her performance wasn't bad, she was too famous for contemporary movies at the time. No amount of buckskins could change that. All the backstage reshuffles and rewrites led to Drew Barrymore labelling her experience working on the film as The Pits. Drew Barrymore threatened to quit the production when the original director, Tamara Davis, was fired due to Davis being a friend of Barrymore's who had directed her in the film Gun Crazy. Will Smith, and I would say Kevin Kline, in The Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West paired Will Smith and Kevin Kline together as a Western version of James Bond and Q, inspired by the television series of the same name that combined the Old West setting with espionage and sci-fi in the 60s. Smith essentially played the Fresh Prince in a cowboy hat, which didn't work with what Kline was doing as Artemis Gordon nor the campy performance Kenneth Branagh was turning in as Dr. Loveless. He was one of many great Hollywood stars who made terrible westerns. When Will Smith asked his mother what she thought of the movie, 
She replied, you've done better, baby. Smith turned down the lead role in The Matrix, 1999, to star in this movie, being a fan of the television series. He later said this was the worst decision he made in his career. Raquel Welsh in Hanny Calder. Welsh was famous for movies when she appeared in Hanny Calder, a story about a woman bent on revenge for the death of her husband, building up to a classic dramatic western shootout. Welsh's performance doesn't give it the weight it deserves, as she's so glamorous that she doesn't fit in. Other western movies like True Grit had female-driven stories grounded by performers who were not hampered by the status of sex symbol and really dig into the role. But Welsh isn't believable as a rugged frontier woman. Aston Kutcher in Texas Rangers. Motley crews of young actors in westerns weren't new when Texas Rangers came out in 2001, very well in movies like Young Guns and Silverado. But placing Aston Kutcher fresh from his That 70s Show into the middle of Texas in 1875 with James Vanderbeek from Dawson's Creek was out of place. Their style of acting along with their features don't lend themselves to the roles of Texas Rangers, especially when placed next to the craggy Dylan McDermott or the always interesting Alfred Molina. Audrey Hepburn in Unforgiven, 1960. The Zacharies are a thriving and respected family on the Texas frontier. Father, Will Zachary, was killed by Kiowa Indians, leaving his oldest son, Ben, Burt Lancaster, head of the family. Ben and his mother, Matilda, Lillian Gish, are very protective of Rachel, Audrey Hepburn, who was adopted as an infant. She is doted on by the whole family, including her older brothers, Cash, Audie Murphy, and Andy, Doug McClure. The family is supported by their neighbour and Ben's business partner, Zeb Rawlins, Charles Bickford. Zeb's shy son, Charlie, Albert Selmy, wants to marry Rachel, which concerns Ben. Hepburn is normally the star of any movie she appears in. She can carry herself and deliver performances worthy of an Oscar. This film just doesn't fit her, but she's still a favourite of mine. Sean Connery in Shalako. Shalako features clueless European aristocrats traveling with their party into Apache territory. While it seems like Sean Connery would be playing a Scottish lord, he's actually the tracker as Shalako. He saves Bridget Bardot's countess from being ravaged and keeps the pampered foreigners safe while they fumble around on Apache land. Unlike when he appeared as the immortal swordsman in Highlander, Shalako is not played tongue-in-cheek. Henry Fonda was originally cast as the lead. Sean Connery's only Western. Elvis Presley in Charo. Elvis always wanted to be a serious actor. Westerns gave him that chance, especially as they weren't filled with songs. He was in a very good western about tensions between white settlers and the first American tribes in Flaming Star. He was miscast in Charo as a thuggish gunman. With a beard, he attempted to embody a tough killer. But the king was always at his best when he showed his sensitivity and emotions to drive his performance, not stifle them into a character of masculinity that didn't suit and didn't suit him. This is the only movie in which Presley wears a beard this is also the only movie in which Elvis doesn't sing. The only song is the one during the titles. Dean Martin in Rio Bravo. Like Sinatra, Dean Martin was a crooner who then became an actor, turning in good performances in Robin and the Seven Hoods and Bells Are Ringing, appearing in Rio Bravo with John Wayne however, was distracting, particularly when the film stops in the middle, so we can perform a duet with teen heartthrob Ricky Nelson. Martin and Avalon were just some of the famous singers who played in westerns with John Wayne, helping boost Wayne's chances at the box office, and it was obvious in the plot.
Hello to any new viewers on my channel. Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button to get my new videos. Share with your friends. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.